Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're looking at case one carrier recovery with the supercarrier using the FA18C. There are 10 pages on the case one recovery in the official supercarrier manual. I have condensed them down to just one page here for a shortened version. Overview. The recovery process starts on entry to the carrier control area or CCA. This is a 50 mile radius circle around the carrier where standardized procedures are followed to quickly recover large number of aircraft with as little communication as possible. Once inside the CCA, check in on the martial frequency, so that's gonna be our first contact with the carrier, with a call sign, position, altitude, and fuel state. Marshall will then provide recovery holding instructions and pass the ship's weather, altimeter settings, which we'll need, and the ship's heading or the basic recovery course. Three types of recovery can be expected depending on the weather conditions. Today we're only looking at case one defined as this is a daytime visual recovery flown when the cloud deck is higher than 3,000 feet and visibility is greater than five miles. Purely for interest sake, the case one holding pattern will be there. The case two and three holding pattern will be there. We'll look at those in a separate two videos. Looking closer at case one, after receiving direction from Marshall, you will then set up to enter holding pattern over the carrier. At 10 miles, you should have the carrier in sight and report see you at 10 over the radio. The Marshall controller will hand you off to the tower and you enter the holding stack. The tower will clear you to leave the holding pattern and commence your landing approach known as breaking the deck. This is known as the Charlie command. You'll descend from holding and fly by the carrier just outboard on the starboard side at 800 feet. You will give a kiss off command to your flight and execute an overhead break to the left and enter the landing pattern. At three quarter miles behind the ship, you will enter the groove and report in with the LSO with the bull radio call. You will fly the rest of the approach and landing based on visual indications on the IFLOS ball and verbal instructions given you by the LSO. If all goes well, you will catch one of the arresting wires and your tail hook and taxi to parking. If not, you will either wave off, abort the approach and re-enter the landing pattern or bolter, touch down on the deck and re-enter the landing pattern. Touch and go and bolters. The procedure for touch and go landings and boulders are identical. Continue to fly the ball all the way to touchdown. Upon touchdown, simultaneously advance power to max, retract speed brakes if deployed, and rotate to the optimum angle of attack for takeoff. Maintain wings level and verify a positive rate of climb. Once positive rate of climb is established and your aircraft is forward of the bow, the front of the ship, use a shallow right turn to parallel the BRC, climb to pattern altitude 600 feet, and turn downwind with proper interval with other landing aircraft. Procedures for wave off are the same as touch and go, except you will depart straight down the angle deck. Let's pick those three stages apart. First of all, the holding stack. Enter our holding stack here at an angels as decided at your mission briefing it will be 2000 or above in 1000 feet intervals note point one of that circle will always be in center carrier it will always be off to the port side of the carrier based on the carrier's direction note points two three and four note that you can only climb within this semicircle area here and you can only descend with this in within this semicircle area here once we're given the Charlie signal and we leave our holding stack, we will proceed to breaking the deck. We will leave tangentially and work our way down to 800 feet, with the end result being on initial on the dead side or starboard side of the carrier, at least three miles from the stern of the carrier. Our hook should already be out. I'd recommend having our hook coming down at at least the 10 mile area here. Proceed along the dead side of the carrier at 800 feet. Each member will give the kiss off command at a different interval, which means breaking into the circuit. For this demonstration, we'll just imagine a single plane flight to keep it simple. So once we pass the bow of the carrier, we will give the kiss off command and a left 180 degree braking turn. During that braking turn, we will get our plane dirty. So gear out, flaps down to maximum. By the end of the braking turn, we aim to achieve 600 feet. We then fly our downwind, our downwind is to be opposite the direction of the BRC, spaced from the carrier by 1.25 to 1.5 nautical miles. While maintaining 600 feet altitude on the downwind, by the end of the downwind, we want to have lowered our speed down to on speed. If you don't know what on speed is, it's a very important concept. We're not looking at it today, but I will link a video where I explain it and how to achieve it. The rest of the approach down to touchdown will be done on speed. Once cleared the stern of the carrier, we will make another left-hand turn, base turn, slightly reducing our altitude to 450 to 500 feet while remaining on speed, occasional left looks to maintain a correct relationship with the carrier. We will finish our base turn at 450 feet and on a course 
of the angled deck. Just before three quarter miles, we will report in either of two commands. One, if we can see the ball, then call the ball. Two, if we cannot see the ball, we will call Clara. In the case of call the ball, we will use visual aids from the ball and continuous LSO audio signals down to touchdown. For Clara, we will just use the LSO audio signals. If we are in the Clara state, we can regain visual on the ball later on. The stretch when our aircraft is wings level to the wires is known as the groove. We'll fly the entire groove on the signals as discussed before, all the way down to a successful catch or touch and go in bolters and wave off and continue as desired. In the cockpit now, the first thing to talk about is the communications. There are two options. Either we can have easy communications on or easy communications not on. Whether easy communications is turned on or off can be determined by your private settings in your DCS or it can be stipulated on the mission that you're flying or it can be stipulated on a multiplayer server that you're flying. So the first thing you need to do is test if you've got easy communications on. And the easy way to do that is if easy communication is on, then this button will allow you to talk to the carrier, the communications menu button. If you try that and it turns out you cannot talk to the carrier, then easy communications will be turned off. In that case, you will have to manually tune in your radio in your cockpit to be able to talk to the carrier. And we've got a separate video showing how to use the radio system, and I'll link that in the video description. We're going to be using easy communications on, so all we're going to have to use is the communication menu button. Next, we're going to need to set up our TACAN and our ICLS. So TACAN, if we want to see what TACAN and ICLS frequencies the carrier is on, left, alt, and bravo. And we can see here in the briefing TACAN, channel 13 x-ray and ICLS channel 11. UFC, TACAN, transmit receive, x-ray as standard, one, three, enter, on, ICLS, channel 11, enter, on. ICLS is not just reserved for case two and case three landing, it's perfectly acceptable and useful to use it on case one landings as well, it gives you an extra set of information down to the HSI, box TACAN, box ICLS or ILS so that we have information in the HUD and you can see 53.3 miles to the carrier. As we go across 50, we'll make our first inbound call. Communications menu, ATC, closest one is Theodore Roosevelt and inbound. So let's pick that apart. The weather is clear. The altimeter setting is 29.93 inches mercury. So let's go and set that quickly. We're going to go down to our steam gauge here and set 29.93. Pace one is expected, obviously, in this case. Basic recovery course expected to be 353. And we're reporting again at 10 miles. So travel to the carrier using the TACAN guidance here. By the time we get to 10 miles from the carrier as displayed there, we want to ensure that we are at the holding stack altitude which is going to be 2000 feet for me in this case and then we will say see you at 10 at that point so let's skip forward time while we've got time to burn we can zoom our hsi so that we can see our carrier or tacan symbol we can also use the course here to set now that we have our brc we can set that to i think it was uh, 353 or you could do it up here on the ufc you can see down there 353 we can use that for when we get on our reciprocal for our downwind to measure our offset to the BRC and additionally we should change our outs from barometric to radar as well okay let's skip forward approaching 10 miles now slightly offset right to the carrier so that we can tendentially merge into the holding stack 10 miles now see you at 10 so we're switching to the tower now and that's done automatically I'm just letting them know our fuel state Next, our hook is going to go down. We will join a left-hand holding stack at 2,000 feet. When the tower deems it clear for me to break the deck, then they will give me the Charlie signal and I can break the deck. That comment was said automatically. Tower, 
I made an automatic comment there and the tower replied with an acceptance and the BRC of 353 and the signal is Charlie. That means I can complete my first orbit of the stack and break the deck immediately. Hitting point one there on a holding stack. Proceeding now to break the deck, work our way down to 800 feet. Level 800. Now passing three miles from the carrier, so left, roughly about a 180 degree turn onto the initial. Complete the initial turn. Gonna fly by the starboard side of the carrier, maintain 800 feet, got a little low there. Bring up the comms menu, we're just a single man flight so we can kiss off immediately. This is really just a call to our flight anyway. Kissing off, I've passed the bow of the ship, I'm making a brake turn, coming off the throttle. Air brake out to reduce speed. Gear coming out. Flaps are coming down to the full position. Again, adjusting trim, work our way down to 600 feet and to on speed, double check gear, double check flaps. In the downwind now, 200 feet too high so we can sink a little. Downwind and run the reciprocal so everything's good. Balance that there. Six hundred feet passing the stern of the carrier. We can pass a little more. Make our base turn, and we're going to further reduce all the way down to four hundred and fifty feet. We'll soon start getting our ICLS localizer and glide slope symbology. Whoops, a little too high there. Periodic left checks. Under 500. All right, just some symbology. We've automatically got the representation of the ball here because the fact is on a video game it's very hard to actually zoom in and see the real ball. So we've got a symbology of the ball there. We've also got a light on the carrier that I didn't show earlier, but we're, this light on the carrier is very useful. It will act as a localizer and tell us our deviance from the lateral radial of the angled runway. We're looking for a solid amber light. So let's continue. We're transitioning to the groove now. Note now also that our symbology from our ICLS has appeared. We have our glide slope here, which we intend to travel flat towards until we merge with it and then follow down. We also have our lateral localizer here that we can use. So a whole bunch of things that we can allow us to get on the glide slope. A localizer here, a glide slope here, another pseudo localizer there, and we've also got the ball here. And pause, let's level out. Oops, slightly above that. Okay, I'm going to call the ball now. Uh, three, nope, we're not quite there. 1.2 miles. Hard to do this and talk, I find. So we're just going to wait. Be patient. Okay, three quarter miles. I'm calling the ball now. So you can see on the ball graphic that I'm clearly below the glide slope. So I need to slightly increase power to bring the marker into the middle of the graphic. And we're going to land as we intend to land. Glide slope's just about there, but we're just slipping left of the localizer. Keep on speed as best we can. I'm slightly deviated from the uh, runway of full power. And, oh, and we've landed. Now that wasn't the best, look at our deviance there from the centre of the runway and that is just by lack of skill there. I did use the instruments as given to me to make it that far. I hope that was useful and I'll see you later.